we have a new video that we're going to be doing. Yes. 50. 50 or 100. All right. You ready to go? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, Richard. One, two, three. Let's go. Okay. Uh, you know, what stimulated this is a lot of people have been, a lot of you guys have been coming up to me and telling me I've tried stuff from your previous videos and they work. And I, I like that. I like that because uh, I'm able to give knowledge that has taken me so many years to, you know, on these birds and, and uh, I mean it gets complicated and nobody wants to share. Somebody learns this much more than somebody else and they keep it a secret so the other person won't be able to threaten them and the flies. Okay, so I want to tell you exactly how I've bred through the years and it's worked. And not saying that some other way may not work either, you know, but, but this has worked for me, okay? Years ago, I started out with a black badge cock that I got from Homer Coderre. And I mated it to a hand that some friends of mine got from Baldwin Park Feed. And they clicked. And we called them, we, my son and I, called them the black badge family. Okay, and, and all through the neighborhood, everybody said, man, you see that black badge family? Well, it was luck because we didn't know what we were doing. And then about a year later, I bought a Paul, a Paul Platt's cock uh, that originated from a jackanet line. And I bred it into these birds, which made them pretty hot. And it added a lot of body muscle, especially on the cock birds. Okay. And, uh, then I was asking people, do you think this body muscle uh, is contributing to the speed? And nobody could really answer me. And I told my son, I believe it is. I just had a hunch. And uh, so I went with that. And I kept the body muscle through the years. I introduced some Houghton, some money Nebel stuff that I got from Dave Sanchez. And that stuff eventually got bred out, but, but uh, I was learning all through the process and everything. Okay, uh, I have brought in birds into my line of pigeons. I have not inbred, I've always outcrossed. And the main thing in this hobby is satisfaction. If you have something that satisfies you, then you've got what you want. For me, uh, I was a speed freak, and I wanted the birds to get faster and faster. So I didn't want what was, I wanted what I could make, basically. And, uh, and it became really complicated, and I'm the type of person I got to read something over and over and over, or do it over and over and over before I get it right. But once I get it, then it kind of stays there. Okay, so I've got notes here. <laughs> Every time I brought a bird into my uh, stock of pigeons, it had to be as good or better, okay? And I believe, I believe that, that there are things that lurk in all these bloodlines that people have inbred out, but the stuff, the ingredients is still there. And I believe that if you take some of those some of those old bloodlines and put them together, out would pop some really, really nice spinning birds, but people choose to keep everything separated from each other. But, but I know that, or I really believe that this stuff is still there. It's there. Anyway, so I didn't worry about that. And I tried making different combos through the years. I would take a bloodline, I'd take my existing bloodline, which was a combination of two or three different bloodlines. I'd made it, I'd bring in another bird, and I would cross it into my birds, and 50-50 cross, I would breed with the birds, and I would fly them. And then I would do a three-quarter cross on the hidden side, three-quarter cross on the cock side and I would breed and fly them. Then I would decide which one was the best. And that's like a three-year process or so. 
And then I would move forward with those and I would discard the other ones, you know, that I did the crosses with. And, uh, and just try to keep moving in a forward direction. Okay, well, the bird started spinning faster and faster. Okay, I kept body muscle in the cock birds especially. Okay, and John and I agreed, uh, you know, when it comes to breeders, you want one with good body muscle and one that's more buoyant, one that, that doesn't have quite that body muscle, right, John? Yeah. So, so that's the way I bred, and I had some long birds, some big birds, some small birds, some short birds. Eventually, I settled in with the shorter bird for better balance and the smaller kit bird, okay? The smaller kit bird. But the breeders, uh, they, they were a little more complicated, okay? Um, as I bred and improved my cocks, and I got more cocks that would throw the spin, eventually the hens started throwing the spin too. And, and typically in the beginning the hens were not, the, not real contributors, it was only the cocks. But now I've got a lot of my hens contributing to the spin too. And I found that once I got the hens that produced the spin, as well as the cocks, I put them together and out pops birds at a whole other level. Okay? And that's what I've done. I want to I wanna get, uh, get a, a board over here and I'm going to explain something, okay? I had the choice uh, as far as getting the birds to be more frequent in the spin, because uh, you keep mating hard feather to hard feather like Ash red and blues, especially, you make them together again and again and again, and, and all of a sudden your birds are taking two years to come in. You don't want that. So I had to choose between recessive red and grizzle. And I saw how grizzle, uh, it gets in there and it's really almost impossible to get out, okay? So I went with the recessive reds, but you you got to realize when you made a recessive red to another colored bird, all the youngsters carry recessive reds. And you make two carriers together, you're going to get lots of recessive reds. They can't handle the real, real fast spin. Okay, the looser feather, the softer feather, uh, it'll cause them to eventually come down on you. So, but. But having a little bit of them in your birds, it makes them more frequent. And it's a good thing. It's just hard to control. So you, you have to mark, what I do, I mark in my breeder book, RC. RC over every bird that carries recessive. Okay, recessive carrier. That's because I like RC cola. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, but what I found through the years was, say, I Let have... Let me zoom in on that, brother. Okay. I have a large cock. Okay. Here, large cock bird with muscle. And my goal is to have smaller kit birds. Because to me, the smaller kit birds outspin the larger kit birds, okay? And that could be tossed around. Some people may not believe or, I don't know. But, but that's what I find to be true, okay? But in order, at first you gotta end up with a larger cock bird with a lot of muscle. Now how do you get more of him, okay? You got to eventually breed larger hens. Okay, if you have a larger hen and you put these two together, okay, mm -hmm. then you'll get large cocks and large hens. But you have to do it in different families. And it, it gets, you know, that gets, every, I mean, everything you do gets a little more and more complicated, but, but this can be done. Okay, now you take the cock bird 
and you made it to a small kit bird. That doesn't look small, but let's say this is a small kit bird, a hen. Mm -hmm. Okay, you mate him to that to produce that. Okay, mm -hmm. and the hens, I just use the hens to produce the breeder cocks with a lot of lot of body muscle. I don't use the hens to produce the kit birds. Okay, so the cock bird will go on a smaller smaller bird and right into the kit cage. Okay, mm -hmm. and the smaller bird is 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 going to be a strong bird too because the cock's carrying a lot of body muscle. You're going to feel that that little bird in the palm of your hand, and, and you're going to say, "Man, I got a got a pigeon here." Okay, okay. <clears throat> now we'll go to the cage, and I'll show you exactly. Okay, here we are in the blazing heat of Apple Valley, but this is typical of what I'm talking about. This is a larger cock, okay? This is a larger hen right here, okay? I use birds this size to produce more breeders like that. These are babies, these are squeakers, but they're already a good size. Okay, the black bee and the cock. I think. <laughs> now, if I want to produce kit birds from this cock bird here, I'll mate it on something this size to get smaller birds. Okay, and I just pull that out of the kit bed. Okay, so these two together to produce breeders. Okay? To produce the larger birds. Okay, I want kit birds, I go to the smaller hen. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a friend that says if the type is right and the eye sign is right, the bird will spin. That's not true. You can have a beautiful cage bird and uh, it really looked like a nice roller, but it's just a shell. The ingredients are the most important thing in the birds. If they don't have the good ingredients, the stuff that are going to produce that high velocity spin, then it's not going to work. Okay? That's what okay. you need. And, and this is, is what you call producing producers. These are spinning producer birds. Okay? The way you produce the, the High velocity spin is just the way that I've told you. That has worked for me, and I believe it to be a fact. How long did it take you to get here? It took a Time lot wise. of years. You know why? Because there was nobody I could ask. I had to do trial and error for the last 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I've had the long birds, again, the short birds, I believe, outperform the long birds. These birds carry the short body within them too, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's easy for me to get the short birds from these birds. You can't tell by looking at them. Mm -hmm. But everything, or 90% of what I learned, I learned by myself because people, if they knew, they didn't share, and if they shared, it was because they were blowing smoke. Everybody acts like they're a roller god, and most people don't know anything. But that's why I want to share with everybody uh, and give you something that you might be able to use. Now, the negative side is, in order to do stuff like this and really pick the best breeding material you have, you got to spend so much time in the loft and really analyze and reanalyze your breedings. Uh, I've got a friend named Alex, Go Alex uh, Godfrey, and he does the same thing. He spends four hours a day in his loft. I don't. I, an hour to two hours. 
but you have to do that. You got to really put in the time. It's not just taking one bloodline and uh, and mating all you know best cock, best looking cock, the best looking hen, and producing gold. It just doesn't work that way. And the other thing is. People say, and even some of the old timers wrote in the books, pick the best spinner and made it to the best spinner in the sky. If you do, your percentages are maybe 50 to 60%. This way of breeding, I get almost 100% spinners in every kit. And I know that sounds crazy, but it works. Try it. Okay. It, it sounds good to me. Richard, question while you're talking. Now, you've mm -hmm. got the two big birds, you made them together. Do you do you fly all their youngsters or you just do it for, you're making a stock bird? I just make stock birds. Okay. I just wanted to get that into the uh, equation. Yeah. Yeah, Richard, no. I'm getting the idea here because I've, I know you. I've talked to you many times. You make breeders to make flyers and then you're adding more to, to the videos that we've done in the past. But I noticed that... Uh, you know, I know you believe in the recessive red black black concept. We did a video on it. Uh -huh. But I noticed in your stock loft, not that I'm being nosy or anything, I'm just stating the back. I noticed that you have more blacks, brother. What's going on here? <laughs> well, that just. <laughs> eh, what's up, Dak? Yeah, that just happened. The spread, it just happened. The spread thing took over, but the you... blacks and the dark checks, mm -hmm. uh, some of the stuff that I mixed in uh, from John's birds, too. Mm -hmm. uh, really helped mm -hmm. and it and a lot of it spread out mm -hmm. and uh and stuff that i got elsewhere well you mentioned to me when you were bringing the birds you know out here that um, the blacks really work the dark checkers really work so you got to stick to what works and uh, without question uh you were having a heck of a time trying to find these birds to to illustrate out here That's they all look like peas in a pot brother yeah. What's up with that? Well, thank you, because that's what you want. All you right. want all your birds to to be to, to look the same. And I, I want to mention, too, the ash reds seem to be a harder feather. They take longer to come in. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's that's what I base it on. That's all. Mm -hmm. The blacks and the dark checks the, and the blue checks, they come in, and blue bars, mm -hmm. they come in... Uh, pretty fast mm -hmm. but the ash reds take longer and, okay and the only thing I can attribute that to is maybe harder feather that's mm -hmm. all brother so I noticed that you have the orange eye and pearl eyes I mean you still like you got to know everything plus and you sort of move it around a little bit I notice yeah I don't really focus on that you don't focus on that no I focus on a, on a good eye good body and the right ingredients okay. all right Joel you got that, Richard Abadak, all the way live. <laughs> I don't go by pearl eyes <laughs> or orange eyes. Okay, got it. Okay. Notice up here, Ash Red, one of the bigger birds, and he, he, I could use him to produce other breeders the same size as him. That's another bloodline. And the trick is to have, have pairs that are that are different. They could be somewhat the same, but they have to be different. And the thing is, if somebody asked me, they said, if you have birds that throw higher level spinners than the rest, wouldn't you just tend to get rid of the other ones and keep the high level, level spinners? <laughs> and I said, no. What you want to do then is bring all of your other families up mm -hmm. to that level. Okay. If you can, and you can use the ones that have achieved more to, you know, to, to help the others get up there. Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned to me on the telephone, the superior helps the good. The superior That's right. pair. That's right. That's right. That's and it all falls right. back to the breeders that make not only flyers but they make but they help the other good birds that's right i'm doing it right here right here okay let me ash, let me go there this ash red and this black hen the ash red mm -hmm. he uh, he is part of a family that i created about four years ago 
okay? And they're, they were very, very top level spinny birds, but I've passed them now. And so I'm taking her family, because her family is part of the family that passed his, and I'm going back into him. And then I may take one of the youngsters and go back to him again. And, and the reason being because she comes from some instability, and he represents stability. So sometimes you have to do it in two steps. Like a dance. Yeah, but the fact is, if you want to breed 50% to 60% spinners, then you do it from the air, the best to the best. Mm -hmm. If you want to breed almost 100% spinners, you do it this way. And that's why we call this video 50 or 100. Okay? And that's your choice. And, and the thing is, like I said, to do stuff like this, it takes a lot of time. You've got to really be devoted. You've got to be a pigeon nerd. Okay? You have to be. And uh, some of you don't want to do that. Some of you would rather buy the stock and just fly it and, uh, and, and win a fly because you use somebody else's stock. Uh, but others, like myself, I don't have time to compete because my thing is to make my birds better and better and better and better and, and uh, no, I, I get like you. That. You can, you can, you bought a used Harley Davidson. You learn how to take it apart, put it together again, and now you really got something going there. So if it breaks <laughs> down, you find the troubleshoot, right? That's right. All right. That's right. All right. That's what I try to do anyway. Okay, that's what we're looking at, everybody. Okay. And the other part of the puzzle is sometimes, you know, the matings may not come out perfect. Mm -hmm. And I always add a prayer to my matings. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's that again? Let's hear this one. <laughs> okay, you got it. <laughs> yeah. I said sometimes you can mate the two logical birds together. Mm -hmm. and, and they may not work 100%. Mm -hmm. But I always add a prayer to God. Mm -hmm. When I do my maintenance, and okay. I believe that he's helped me a lot. Brother, I noticed something about you, too, I want to throw in here in the pot. I noticed that when you're around your pigeons, you get fueled up. You know, you know your, your, your tank doesn't go empty. You get fueled up when you're around your birds. Am I reading this right? Probably. Okay. Probably. Because okay. that's what it's supposed to do, brother, it's give you fuel. and all your birds should look the same. You shouldn't have long ones, short ones, big ones, small ones. I've got big ones, small ones, but for a reason. The breeders are big or medium sized. Mm -hmm. Wow, without question, brother, you've, uh, you're improving the birds. Yeah, see the hens, the heads stay on the small size. Mm -hmm. We gotcha. To make just birds. Okay, the basis of this video, everybody. And the basis of this video is to share with everybody, and if you do what I've done, it does work. There may be a better way to do it, but this does work, and uh, I would love to see everybody fly really good birds, and there's no reason why you can't, okay? The only thing that stops you is is buying something that, that was produced that that is not that good or maybe was at one time. Uh-oh. You can't, you cannot. You mean B and C birds, D well, birds. Okay, well, instead of A birds, huh? Yeah, you can't go into the uh, feather merchant type selling. You can't sell birds in large quantities and be a quality breeder. You have to be one or the other because both are same time consuming. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you have to do one or the other. And if you don't, uh, then the ones you're selling are going to going to start doing that after a while. Mm -hmm. And they do. They do. And again, everything has to do with self-satisfaction. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. So God bless everybody. And, uh, and I hope what I've told you works for you. And have a nice day. Okay? Okay. Hey, brother, before we sign off, I know you did. That's a perfect video, brother. As always, you do a good video. Thank you. N not to get really deep into uh, some other things that, that I have in my mind, but inbreeding, brother, when you 
when you have it like this, I'm getting the general picture that when you have it designed like this, you don't have to incest and still get the super quality. Am I right? That's right. Okay. Yeah, okay, I get it. I get it. Because that's the first thing people do when they get birds. They want to go in, 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 and they need to go out. And that's because that's what they're taught. That's what they're taught. Okay. And, and uh, you know, I was told that years ago you could just go to the feed store and you could pick up, pick up almost anything and they mm -hmm. threw great spin. Mm -hmm. But things have changed through the years, you know. Uh, if we had new stock coming from England all the time, coming into the U.S. or, or some other place, people wouldn't have to do what I, what I did. But I had to just reju rejuvenize the birds. Okay. Bring back what was. Hopefully. Okay, here's what we're looking at. See that? Peace in the valley. All right. All right, Richard. All right, guys. We got another video for you guys out there. All right, bye.